guys and good morning and welcome back to my channel. It is early in the morning so excuse my voice <laughs> and excuse that maybe I will be a bit slower than usual but I will try my best to give you a good quality video of course. <laughs> uh, today we are going to make a very nice beginner friendly, very important, it's super super easy um, dress that I already made a mock-up in a satin fabric that turned out wonderfully. So I'm super excited to share this project with you guys. We're going to make it out of this beautiful green satin right here, which I have left over from, you know, my backless gown video that I did a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to make a really, really cute pine green satin dress. We're gonna make a circle skirt and then a draped top with uh, strings to bow tie it in the neck and in the back. So it's going to be really, really nice and elegant. And yeah, I chose a beginner friendly video for this week because I only have four days to do all of the stuff that I need to do for this Sunday's video and I have to be ready on Thursday, it's Tuesday already, so I have to power through the sewing process and filming process today until somewhat 12 o'clock, it's like 8 at the moment, and then do everything in the next coming days because I will be gone on Friday until Sunday as there is the happiness is handmade award ceremony, all of that spans over the whole weekend so I will be away gone in Cologne and attending that and I'm super excited I will be wearing the dress that I make today so really really excited to see what comes out and yeah I guess enough said let's start the video I already cut out my fabric as you can see I prepared it yesterday the fabric uh, the pattern will be linked down in the description below it's a super easy pattern so everybody can have a go at this and it's gonna be a really really nice and elegant dress so this is the pattern right here and then on top of that I cut out a few strips so these are cut out on the bias which means they are elastic on the bias just means at a 45 degree angle not with the grain so my grain is like this at a 45 degree angle and that's why it's stretchy. So we want to make one long strip out of this, which we do by putting right sides together of the strips at a 90 degree angle, just like this. And so from this corner down to this corner like this. And then once we unfold it, it's gonna lay like this. And why we do it like this is easy because if we have a seam that is at a 45 degree angle, it will never fold on top of the seam. So it won't bulk as much as if you have a 45 degree angle, it's just gonna wrap around basically. So it's less bulky. That's the reason why we do this and it's super, super useful this tip. So whenever you have to sew strings or straps or anything together like that, just use this method. It's the professional way of doing it, I guess. Everybody does it like that, as it's just the easiest way. So I'm gonna do that really quickly, and then we're gonna make straps out of this by folding them on top of each other, right sides together, and then stitching at, I think, at 75 millimeters from the edge right here, so somewhat in the middle of this here and we're gonna turn everything over and that's gonna make a really, really cute, small, neat strap that we're gonna use to lace the dress in the end. Once the strip is like one long one, you have to find the end, first of all, and then I'm just gonna give this an iron and on top of that, also iron the seam allowance open so that it lays flat and is even less bulky. And I also cut the seam allowance down to five millimeters or something like that with my zigzag shears. And this is what the strip is going to turn out um, once you turn it over. I attached wool on one side so that I can pull on it here. 
and turn the thing inside out or like right sides out it ripped here though that's why i have this one separately and here it seems to be pretty tight but i'll make it work somehow and i'm gonna turn this over and i'll be back once i have my strips ready okay so these are done and they all measure 90 centimeters so you will have to uh, cut out 36 uh, 3.6 meters <laughs> to turn everything over and then just cut four of these strips to make the straps for the back and I'm just gonna quickly cut off the ends and then use my lighter because I'm using synthetic material so I can just melt the edges down so that it won't fray. I will be doing that for the ends uh, that will be loose as well just because, as I said, it's a quick and easy way of, you know, avoiding fraying. If you use a natural um, fiber, so you can't melt this, obviously, just fold it over and bar tag on top here and it will be okay too. So these are prepared now and we can continue with putting interfacing onto our front pieces, front and facing. So these right here. I will be putting interfacing all around the neckline but I will be putting the dart together. I will be closing the dart before I do that. So there is this right here and we're going to iron the dart upwards so that we're not gonna look into the dart seam basically when this is worn. I'm going to use my tailor's ham that you can click up here if you want to make yourself a tailor's ham as well as I made this myself. So just going to iron this upwards with a little bit of steam like this. And for the facing, as it has two pieces, we're also going to close the dart just as we did for the front piece and then also put right sides together and close the center front seam right there and iron it open. So we're going to iron the center front open and then we're going to do exactly the same with the darts. So we're going to iron them down so that the darts nest once we put the facing and the front piece together. And now it's time to put interfacing on both of the pieces. So I'm just going to start right here and then put it all around everywhere until I reach the other side here and repeat that with the front piece as well. We can cut away the dart up here that is that is reaching over the neckline in the front piece. And now we're gonna take our facing and put all of our straps in positions. So we're gonna put one strap right here onto the point right here where the strap is gonna be attached and we're gonna bar tack it onto the seam allowance. Then the next one is going to go the same position on the other side and we're going to put the other two right here into this corner. And the last one goes in the corresponding corner on the other side. And as I said, I'm just going to bar tag them in place and then we can put a right sides together of facing and front piece and just sew all around the neckline and make sure to put everything neatly on top of each other. The facing is a tiny bit smaller than the front piece, as you can see here, and that's how it's supposed to be. So you want to align all of the seams on top of each other and maybe stretch the facing a tiny bit so that everything fits together well. This is gonna help you once you're gonna uh, turn the piece right sides out that the ditch of the seam is going to fall towards the facing so we're going to iron that um, like that as well but it helps it and it's uh, going to avoid 
um, on top of a few other things, the seam showing on the front. So very important, the facing is always a tiny bit smaller and we're gonna do that right now. Bar tag and then put the pieces together. And we're going to understitch the bodice as well. Before we do that, we're gonna cut down the seam allowance in a specific way. So this here is a curve and to lay it flat, once you turn it over, you're just gonna cut towards the stitching line at some distance. I'm just gonna do two centimeters. And what this does is once you pull this straight, it opens up the seam allowance and um, allows it to lay straight, even though it's a curve. And this here, we're just gonna cut down and I'm probably gonna have to redo a bar tag right here as I just made a corner uh, so that the straps are secure in place. And I'm also gonna cut down the seam allowance towards the corner here so that once I turn it over, there is no bulk here. I'm going to do exactly the same here. And for the center front, I'm going to cut towards the middle and then drastically cut down the seam allowance here to around like two, two millimeters because this won't turn if you don't do that. So you need to take out a lot of seam allowance here in the middle and here I'm just gonna cut this down as well and here as I did on the other side already. And then here I'm also gonna cut towards the seam allowance so that it turns over nicely. And before we do that, we're going to understitch the seam. So we are going to fold the seam allowance towards the facing, which is this way, and then put this under the machine and stitch very closely to the ditch of the seam and stitch the seam allowance onto the facing, basically. You're not gonna be able to do that all the way around as we have some corners here. So you're just gonna stitch towards the corner as far as you can, back tack and start another seam after the corner. Same goes to where the straps are here in the front piece, in the middle and on the other side as well. And once that is done, we can go ahead and iron the top and the seam should already help us. So the understitching should already help us. And as you can see right here, it falls pretty nicely as it's supposed to. So the understitching and then also the cutting towards the seam um, helps very, very much when manufacturing bodices like this. And then once you iron it, it just lays perfectly. So I recommend this for everything uh, similar to this. And as you can see here, I was not able to uh, sew towards uh, the strap here, obviously. So I just stopped and then started again over here. So you're probably gonna have to do that as well. And look how perfect the corner here looks. That's due to cutting down the seam allowance and cutting towards the corner here in the seam allowance. And then it lays perfectly flat, just like this. I'm gonna have a reel up in my uh, this week on my Instagram where I'll be showing you how this looks if you don't do what I showed you, um, because that's also pretty interesting to understand how this technique works. If you haven't already, you should definitely go follow me on my Instagram as I am sharing all of these tips irregularly and they're maybe interesting to you. So go ahead and check my Insta out. This is what the bodice looks now. So this is done and it looks pretty neat in my opinion. So that's nice. And we can continue with the skirt now. The skirt is pretty straightforward. We're going to um, put the side seams together first. We have the two pieces, or three pieces they are, um, two for the back and one for the front. So the front lays on fold, which just means that there won't be a seam in the center front. So the skirt basically is in thirds and I'm just gonna give this a quick press. And when you press a circle skirt like this, this is by the way, half a circle skirt. So half 
a circle is wrapped around to form your skirt. The direction of the grain is pretty important when ironing this. So the center front here lays on the grain as I had it unfold. Uh, so you want to iron in that direction and then 90 degrees of that direction. You don't want to iron diagonal because you're gonna stretch out the fabric. And you're gonna see that in just a second with my back skirts as they uh, also lay with the grain in one seam and then right here they lay in a diagonal way. So if you were to iron in this diagonal way, you're just gonna stretch out the seam and then the two fabrics won't fit together anymore. So even though it might look a bit weird, you always want to iron with the grain to avoid that. Here with the back skirt, the center back with the zipper notch, it's right here, um, lays with the grain. And then the side seam is on the bias basically. So you also want to iron with the grain again. Okay, so now that that's done, we can continue and put the pieces together. So this is the center back, there is the notch. And that is the side seam. So we're gonna put the front piece together with the side seam right here and then overlock this. And then we're gonna do exactly the same to the other side seam and put the other back piece onto the skirt. Okay, the skirt is put together now. I also went ahead and overlocked the center back seams because we're gonna have to have them overlocked separately once we put the zipper in, you're gonna see why. And now we're going to iron the seam allowance towards the back, so this direction. And this is on the bias, so this is probably gonna be a bit weird, but we're gonna iron in a diagonal way as well with the grain. And that is with the grain for both the front and the back piece, so we're not gonna stretch out the seam in any way. And once again for the other side. And we can already put right sides of skirt and bodice together. So we're gonna put um, our skirt left, we're gonna put our skirts wrong sides down and then put the outside layer, so the one without the seam right sides together with the skirt. We're gonna match up the notches and only sew the outer fabric, the outer layer onto the skirt and leave the facing hanging basically because it's just gonna fall nicer if you don't attach the facing to the skirt. So we're going to just match up everything. So also the center back and you're gonna find that the center back should match up perfectly at one centimeter right here because there's gonna be some sort of like a corner basically. And then you just want to align both layers together. And we're gonna sew the waistline and then also overlock the seam. And while we're at it, we can also go ahead and overlock the waistline of the facing separately. So everything is gonna look neat and tidy and overlocked. And once that is done, we are going to do two things. First of all, we're going to iron the seam allowances down into the skirt for both the facing and the skirt and outer bodice seams. Okay, now that that's done, you can choose to do um, an understitching seam right here that is gonna hold the seam allowance in place and keep it down. Or what I will be doing, which is also gonna include keeping the facing in place, I will add a hand stitch right here where the seam allowances are, which is very loose so that the facing especially has room to move around a tiny bit. Otherwise you might find that the uh, outer layer is kind of like tucking weirdly or like the facing is tucking weirdly and therefore having the outer layer roll over the seam in a weird way and that just doesn't look nice. So to avoid that, you're just gonna sew this very loosely into place where you can sew at the seams here and here. And I'm just gonna do that with a quick hand stitch 
and I'm gonna double the thread, make a notch at the end. Then I can go towards the inside here and then I can stitch here where the seam allowance is, fix the uh, outer layer, the seam, into place and just repeat that a couple of times with a rather, you know, like wide stitch. And I'm also gonna add the stitch to keep the facing in place and I'm gonna do that by just leaving about a centimeter in between. So maybe this, this much, and I'm gonna repeat that a second time. And then I'm just gonna go around this to give it more strength like this and then I'm just gonna knot my thread here and I can cut it and this way the facing stays in place and it doesn't um, come out at the top at the neckline the seam goes down and you don't have a top stitch here, which looks nice in my opinion as nothing has a top stitch on this dress. So I think that's a really nice detail. It has room to wiggle around. So all of the problems will be avoided if you do this. And I will be repeating the same on the other side here. The next thing that we're gonna do before we close the back is hem the skirt. I am going to fold the hem inwards two times five millimeters, so just like this, and then just top stitch closely to the inner fold right here. I will do that by hand, not with my hemming foot as per usual, but this is a skirt, uh, this is a circle, um, so the hemming foot doesn't work as neatly with, um, you know, um, changing grain lines. So this is gonna be once very stretchy and then once it's not gonna be stretchy at all and the hemming foot just doesn't really like that. I recommend it for straight lines or like grain lines that don't change. So I, I'll just be doing the folding while I'm sewing on the sewing machine. Obviously you can prepare that by ironing and pinning it beforehand if you want to. I won't do that though and after that, we're gonna close the back and put the zipper in, and then the dress is already done. Okay, so now that the skirt is hemmed, we are going to put the back piece together, or the close the center back seam, and we're gonna do that from the notch where the zipper will end all the way down to the hem aligning everything. We are going to iron the seam allowance open. And as this is on the straight grain, this should be pretty easy to do. And now we can put the invisible zipper in, here where it's still open. Most of you probably already know how to put a zipper in, but I will be explaining it again in great detail. You want to open your zipper and put right sides together. So we're going to uh, open up our facing so that it is away from the zipper seam. And then we're gonna align the plastic stopper up here with the fold, this fold right here, of our piece. And just pin that in place. Then, without stretching anything, we're gonna work our way down. And if you are stretching something, it must be the zipper, not the fabric. Because if you're gonna stretch the fabric, you're gonna have a bubbly zipper in the end. So if anything, the zipper should be a tiny bit stretched. If you have, for example, stretchy fabric, or you have something uh, on the bias, you want to stretch your zipper instead of the other piece. 
Now we're going to just sew this in place using our invisible zipper foot and we're gonna roll the teeth of our zipper open and stitch right here into the fold that opens up and that's gonna ensure that we have the neatest result possible. To mirror the placement of the zipper to the other side, we're just gonna basically do exactly the same as we did for this side, but I like to close my zipper for that and then just more or less copy the placement. So it's very easy if you have the zipper closed to, for example, copy the placement down here where it um, goes into the seam because you can just lay it flat and that's just gonna ensure that there won't be any weird bulges or something like that. And then up here is the exact same placement as we did for the other side. So exactly where the plastic stopper ends, we want to have the fold and then we're just gonna pin the zipper in place and sew it in place. We're gonna open it for that as well. We can now turn everything right sides out and iron the zipper seam. It should look like this, so barely visible, especially if you have a matching color. I just had a black one, but that's fine. You can give this an iron. Well. Maybe not do that. So as I was saying, iron the seam and then we're gonna solve this issue up here. So the facing is now facing outwards and we obviously want to turn it back inwards. So we're just gonna flip the zipper to where it's gonna end up being and then turn the facing on top of it. So this is gonna end up looking somewhat like this on the inside. So you're basically gonna turn the facing on top of the zipper, so in and over. And I'm just gonna pin this in place. On both sides. So I'm going to turn this in and over, just like this, and pin it in place, like this. And we're gonna fix that in place with a small hand stitch, as I don't want to have any seams visible. If you don't want to do that, you can obviously also put a small, small bar tag right here somewhere to fix it in place. Everything is possible here. I ended up doing the bar tag, as you can see here, and this is what it looks from the inside. Always remember that before you sew anything in place here, close the zipper and match up both of these edges up here so that they're gonna be at the same height as mine are right here. And the dress, is done. So as you can see, the dress is completely done. It's a super cute, um, kind of flowy and not too tight dress that is easy to make and it still looks very elegant. So I'm super, super happy with this project and I hope that it was easy to follow and that you had fun sewing along with it if you did so. I know there are a lot of you guys who just watch my videos for fun, which is super cool in my opinion as well, because that's what I do too with other YouTubers, um, with sewing content and so on. I always put them as a podcast or something and you always learn something new. So it's really, I think, a great thing to do. So thank you so much for that. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, also if you're interested in upcoming events, vacation and whatnot, obviously my cat, <laughs> then you should definitely go check out my Instagram and give me a follow there. I am posting loads of reels with sewing related content. I'm giving you tips and tricks um, that you might be interested in. So if you haven't already, go follow me on my Insta or my socials. Anyways, my, the most direct way to support me and my channel and to keep videos just like this one going is to just check out my Etsy store where you can also get this pattern right here. It is linked in the description box down below and also in the pinned comment as per usual. So you can go and check out my store and maybe you'll find another pattern that you're interested in as well because I have so many patterns already. All of them are with a tutorial here on my YouTube channel. You might already know that and um, yeah, maybe you'll find something cool to make for summer 
and yeah so thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you next sunday bye guys